podcast. That was the first thing I wanted to do was make sure I checked that and then looked around. I have a spread, my friend. A spread? A spread. I have oh options. All right. Well, first of all, for posterity, this is a two grains, one bottle, April. Which April, so posted. that is Easter. Well, it's going to no, it's going to get po- it always posts on the first Monday of the month. So, uh, April 4th, which is why we had to do it fairly quick here. Okay. I started I had that realization like, ah, crap. Oh, okay. So, so not Easter then. No, we can talk about Easter if you want. I don't but know. I purposely I purposely left it out of my things to talk about. Fuck off, cat. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I guess I should crack open. Are you going Irish first or Japanese first? Oh, I have no idea, man. I have uh, the Doers 15 in front of me, the Rigers Kansas City whiskey, the Nika whiskey from the barrel. <clears throat> oh, geez, you do have a spread. It's already going to hit me. Whiskey from the barrel, 51.4%. And the Whistler Irish Oloroso Sherry cask Ooh. finish. Well, I just have these, and the other one I have is the scotch I did last time. It's It's been hanging around, and... I'm say I, I I I you know a little bit of time for it, uh, but yeah I it, it I, I've had two interviews now where I didn't have bourbon, and uh, both people were like, um, "You got any bourbon?" I was like, "No, I have peanut butter whiskey, and I have all this other stuff." <laughs> you're not getting my sketch. So you're going Irish? Yeah, I'm gonna go sure Irish. Go. I too shall go with the Kilbreen. Glug 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 glug. So this was forty bucks. Uh, these are minis, so I don't know what the full size one is, but I can look it up. Uh, first fill bourbon, second fill Oloroso sherry. Nice. So I'm uh, I'm really interested because I want the sweetness and the lightness. Ooh. Oh, very very cute little pop, soft soft cork. This is a well hydrated bottle. I feel like, did you and I have the Four Roses before? I believe we've had Four Roses, yes. Well, this is small batch select. We probably had the mini like this, so whatever. This isn't a review show, really. This is, doesn't have to be new. Uh, all right. Uh, you want to do, shall I do the intro? I think I've, I think I've worked myself into, I need to buy an L desk. <laughs> This sucks. I ha- yeah, I uh, I had two desks, and well, the wife had to work from home. So this sucks uh, so much. Like, I feel really prepared for today's show, but right. Jesus, do look, look at this. Look. I can't flip it. Where's the thing? Can't press it twice. To share the screen. Flip the fucking there. Nice. I see what you did there. there. And then it comes around. Mm -hmm. Look at you. You you even got fruit. Yeah, I know. For my water. You gotta stay hydrated. Can't let the scurvy get me. Scurvy. Yeah. That's why I have Ricola. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, All right. Uh, three, two, one. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the show where we talk about all sorts of weird things. We try to figure life out one drink at a time. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. And together, we are drinking whiskey, and among other things. Uh, how are you doing, Sean? If I were any better, I'd be taller. <laughs> how about yourself? I haven't heard that one. Um, uh, if I was any better, I'd be you. Oh, that's cute. That's, that's a classic. Right. So we're both enjoying an Irish whiskey, but we're enjoying two different Irish whiskeys because we have to do this remotely because Sean went and moved to Kansas City a long time ago, and I'm still stuck in Vegas. So... What are you? Uh, what are you drinking there, sir? Uh, the Whistler Irish Whiskey Olor- <clears throat> Oloroso Sherry Cask Finish. So that is the second finish after the bourbon. 
Yeah, I think you and I did a Whistler, but I, I, it wasn't the Oloroso. I think, I, I think we did a Remer at Caribbean. Yeah, it was like it was weird to us, so we we're like, "Oh, let's try that." I am drinking the Kilbrin Irish whiskey, product of Ireland. Um, it's a forty percent alcohol, and <laughs> established two thousand seventeen, so it's got a real uh, real lineage there. But it doesn't have any information about like. Really, there's not much on the label, but then again, I'm drinking a mini bottle from Total Wine. Uh, 43%. <clears throat> ah, look at you. Natural color, non chill <clears throat> filtered. Nice. I was debating between this and um, the Red Breast Lestal, but I couldn't mm. justify the $78 price point. I just... Yeah, like, that's that's a celebration kind of thing. And and Red Breast Lestat is a little more readily available than the Nika whiskey from the barrel. I haven't seen that in a whole lot of shops. Nice. And I've been well, wanting to get. I wanted to justify getting a Japanese whiskey. <clears throat> mm. uh, now, according to their website, Kilburn Whiskey, it just says ten year. So I don't know if this is a, also a ten year whiskey. There's no. No age statement on the mini bottle. There's nothing except when they were established and the proof and, you know, handcrafted and product of Ireland and, and that's about it. So going off their website, you know, their their website literally says, here's all the notes about it. <laughs> and, and here's awards we've won. And, and apparently they've won an award. So, well, but what's, uh, what's going on with your... Um, your Oloroso there. It was um, there was a yellowiness to the uh, to the smell. It was it to was, the smell. It was banana. It was uh, like an underripe mango. It was a weird fruit funkiness. Fruit funkiness. So you said yellow. I thought you meant like yellow dye number five or a Twinkie or something. <laughs> no yellow. I was trying to get to banana. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Brown sugar. Like, it's more brown sugar in that than I've had in some bourbons recently. Mm-hmm. In a, in a good way. But that sherry just finishes on top, like a like a syrupy glaze, like a drizzle or or no no like a uh, like a mirror finish ganache. Mm. Oh, nice. Oh, Ooh. that's great at forty bucks. I really I like I, that. I tell you what, this Kilbrin has layers I wasn't expecting from a mini bottle, mm -hmm. but I can you I believe that this mini bottle. Is the same ten year. I you can taste the age um, on, on like nose wise. There, there's vanilla and the baking spices and and there's uh, their website says orchard fruits. I would say stone fruit, but you know same banana, you know tomato tomato, but also banana bread, but like hot banana bread, not um, just room temperature banana bread. Like right when you first get it out of the oven or so, um, and and like literally can taste. The butter on the banana bread, but uh, there's there's a there's a layer of smoke some buried in the bottom, which was really surprising for an Irish whiskey. And there's honey. You said honey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's definitely some peatiness to this, which I wasn't expecting. But it's not the kind that you and I have suffered through in the past. This is this is peat used as an a character, you know, trait and a, and a, um, to like give it some, some base, so to speak. So and, and I'm not taking camp, it, not campfire, not wood right. burning stove, not tandoori oven. What I got first was, Ooh, this is, I, I, there's honey and there's, you know, um, not a dessert whiskey. Oh, did God, you get, whiskey. did you get like a brisket or a, like a smoked meat from the peat? Mm. no. No, I got if I if I smoked cigars, 
this is what I would taste if I drank whiskey after having a cigar, so as to, opposed to as opposed to blowing a cigar smoke into my whiskey. So tobacco yeah. now. But no, no, I miss. You know what? I, I say that as someone who never smoked. So what I get, it, it's peat. It's definitely peaty, but it's it's literally from I, like from the top down. My tongue is the honey, the banana bread, the um, you know, the usual whiskey stuff that you get in an Irish whiskey, and then just just right there on the end, as in as a, as like a, a rounding off, a finishing, you know, there you go, a little pat on the bottom <laughs> of, of peat. It's, it's just so nice because mm. usually with peat, it's it's the first thing you taste, kind yeah. of, and you got to work. I didn't have to work for the, through the peat. I had to really. I waited, and suddenly there was peat, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm okay with this." That. Oh, yes. I'm getting the full bottle of this. This is nummy num. And I'm sure I I didn't pay attention. Like I said, I went right to the minis because of, of time, quite frankly. And um, at Total Wine here in lovely Henderson, Nevada, the Kilburn 750 milliliter is currently going for 38 bucks. Boom. Oh, oh, it's a wait. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. They have a blended Irish whiskey for thirty-eight bucks. They have an Irish whiskey sherry cask for twenty-seven bucks, and they have a blended Irish whiskey. What's the difference for eight, nineteen bucks? What the hell? What's the difference? Man, I'm confusion. I'm really happy that I found this distillery because this is speaking to everything I love about shopping local. The production nice. of the highest quality single pot still distillate requires a considered effort to not only efficiently process the unmalted grains contained within the single pot still mash bills, but to also maximize the flavor and mouthfeel of Ireland's single signature style of whiskey. Every raw ingredient source is 100% natural and 100% local. Every drop of water is drawn from our Boyne Valley well. Every grain of barley is provided by our native farmers. We operate a closed wow. loop system for water, recycling, all our input, water, and maximizing energy recovery for our <laughs> systems. Uh, the heat generated helps run our packaging lines and will heat the restaurant, visitor center, and offices. Rainwater harvesting will be utilized to minimize our footprint, but also our water, our gin botanicals. All byproducts on distillation, pot cell, or pot ale and spent grains are very high in protein and used as animal feed. Like, good God, man, everything goes back into the company. I love right? that shit. They are doing I haven't it. Heard, Brooke Lottie's doing it. Oh. I, I haven't heard that much kind of like, we're keeping it as, as local as possible since Frey Ranch. Right. The one that's like yeah. all Nevada. Everything about it is Nevada. Um, I, I need to clarify. I, I Looking at Total Wine's website, the, the mini bottle I got of Kilbrin, it's a blended Irish whiskey. It just doesn't say it anywhere on the bottle. So, and this is, it's two bucks for the mini. It's 19 bucks for the 750 which is, in my opinion, this is good value. I can only imagine how good the ten-year single malt Irish whiskey from them is for sixty for fifty bucks. Frey Ranch. Uh, next time I'm out in Vegas, we should go to the distillery and do a tour. Totes. I mean, we got it's all the way out in Fallon, so road trip. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we should do that, and I will definitely be recording. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a room six review for for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Oh man! Oh hey, um, I wanted to tell you real quick. Uh, I thought about you. I heard this story. These these two cowboys were lost in the desert, oh, no. and they see a tr they're they're, they're, they're to see like, it. starving. They're they're starving. They're starving. Oh god! And they see a they see they a tree help? covered in bacon. And they're like a oh, bacon tree. We're saved. And one of the cowboys runs up to the tree and is instantly shot up with bullets. It, it wasn't a bacon tree after all. It, oh it was a hand no! Bush. Not a not a not a bacon tree. It was a ham bush. <laughs> oh, Bazinga. God, that, that joke. Welcome back. Fucking bad, man. Oh. I don't write them, I just read them. That hurt me to hear it. <laughs> ham bush. Oh, yeah. I, I, honestly, I got, I got pretty much the same re reactions at dinner, and I, 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 I feel no shame. Oh, man. So are you ready to get a, on tour? There's such fucking inner peace with feeling no shame. <laughs> right? Amen, brother. Like, Amen. You, you just you hit a point at a certain point in life and you go, 
I really don't fucking care anymore. Right. And you just uh, mean it with your soul, and it's just, like, <laughs> it's just, that's that's who I am. I don't really care. The things that I know, I love, I love, and the things that I don't, fuck off. Like, just sometimes, leave. Don't yeah. need you. I have a sometimes full life. In life. Sometimes in life, you just gotta say, what the fuck. Uh, before we get into, like, the actual topics and stuff, I just wanted to say thanks to you for listening, pod- Derek Podcast listener. Um, and if you're listening to this, there's a good chance you're a patron on Patreon for Room 6. Thank you so very much. Um, everything, you know, we do is because of you. So, hope you like this, and uh, feel free to share. Feel free to invite other people to become patron. <laughs> you're right there. Ooh, that little... Oh my god, that tastes like chocolate. Jesus Christ. But, like chocolate in a good way, or... No, Bitter like chocolate. I just fucking. Oh man, that's like I took a spoonful from a, a container of hot fudge and sucked it off like it was <laughs> like a fucking caramel and just swallowed it all. Like just coating all of this. That is so syrupy. Nice. This is wow. this Kilburn is just getting better and better. It's it's just this side of of feeling syrupy. But it isn't. It's not cloying. The, they, the honey they used is really just like a chef's kiss. Just nice, like, touching. Um, speaking of touching, are you ready for our first topic, sir? Man, that stuff's so thick. It pulled stuff out of my teeth that had been stuck there for a week. <laughs> nice. Um, uh. So, first of all, I assume, did you hear Daylight Savings is eventually going to be gone away? Yes, I did. They're here about damn time. I just don't know why we can't do it this year, and also why why are we springing forward? Why can't we leave it, you know, one hour behind? I say we take a poll. Well, they did of people whose job it was to vote on this, but no, 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 go no. Ahead. I say we take a poll, mm. and we figure out what oh, hours that's... people actually need to work. Some people operate on a night-based circadian rhythm better than they do in a daytime. Vegas. You know, there are yeah. people who work better early hours, and I think that you should take that into consideration. If they really enjoy getting their day started, give them a chance to move to the East Coast. <laughs> you know? Like, really give yeah. them give them all of the fucking morning they can handle. I hate mornings. Well, yeah. Same. I want longer nights. But if if you wake up at night, like if you don't wake up in the morning, then whatever you wake up becomes your morning. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. I used saying. to work graveyard. Yeah. I used to work graveyard. I used to wake up at like two or you know one in the afternoon. And... Yeah, but maybe I'm offended by the term graveyard. Maybe it implies uh, that you're going to die sooner, and that doesn't make it nice to me. Like it it's sure not felt martic. like it. It sure felt like it, man. <laughs> it I don't wears know. you down. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, like, I prefer to work at night for maybe as long as I do until I turn into a morning person. Right. Well, I don't know if I'll ever be a proper morning person, but I certainly deal with it better than when, you know, I was, like, in my 20s or even 30s. Um, But, yeah, I thought that was cool. I thought I wanted to, you know, just talk about it briefly because this is history. Again, we're living through history, damn it. You know, it's a wonder when... We were growing up, everyone's like, oh my god, I feel so old. And everyone's like, oh, you feel, you're too young to be saying that. But really, <laughs> the world breaks you down, man. It really well, just, it's it crushes your soul. It can. That, that That's why we need things like music and the arts and whiskey. Oh. We need libations. We need, and we need to be a little more introspective. Well, sometimes one can lead to the other. No, oh, you, you know. Yeah. I hope so. But then there's some yeah, people so. who don't like libations. Fucking then give them all of Alaska and Wyoming. Let them all <laughs> go live by themselves in single family homes. I'm sure there are people that live there that can drink us under the table. Or Just they can because live they in communal live housing, whichever is their preference. Oh my <laughs> God, the communal housing versus the single family home stuff. And the golf course communities is fucking outrageous. Did you hear about all that shit going on? Yeah, a little bit. And man, it's 
it's just like why why do you have to make things worse? You know? There's always somebody. Fucking just give the people what they want. Well, you know, you know, Blade said it best. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. <clears throat> speaking of which, speaking of motherfuckers, um d- did you hear about Tinder? I know it's a dating app. Yes, well, oh, back in the day it was. Uh, back in the day, not now. Yeah. You and I fortunately don't need it at the moment, but uh, Tinder is apparently now going to allow users to run in-app background checks, like criminal background checks, before going on a date with somebody. And I say, good. Yeah, two thumbs up for sure. Yeah. Uh, there's limitations, of course, but they get access to two free background checks. Uh, uh, and after that, they pay two dollars and fifty cents plus a small processing fee per transaction that uh, fund you know the, the checks. And I'm like, you know what? Pfft, that's fine. Even you know five bucks to make sure I'm not hooking up with you know somebody who's just got out of jail or something. Anyway, I, I just thought that was it. It's a sign of the times, but it's also kind of amazing to to think like. You're already doing something kind of sketchy with Tinder and Grinder and all those, and this just makes it slightly less so. Anyway, did you ever use any sort of dating app, Sean? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. I used Tinder. I used Bumble. Uh, really? I used Plenty of Fish. <laughs> um, I I used, used... Okay Cupid. Oh. I I, I, I I had a girlfriend briefly through Match.com. I think it was, or yeah, it was Match.com. It, but that, those are actually like dating sites and not just dating app where you're swiping. And and that was so long ago. <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> I'm glad to not be dating. Same. There are, of course, times just because you live when you live with people in the same place, there are times you're like, man, it was so much simpler when I was single, but and you realize, oh, yeah, I was kind of miserable. Well, the other thing is, you know, my partner and I got together when, like, things are still shut down. Yeah. Now I that remember. stuff's starting to open, now that now that I'm getting calls for work, mm-hmm. I'm starting to go out more, and things are starting to open back up, and they're actually openly talking about doing a fourth dose and things like that. Like we're, it seems like hopefully we're progressing. I don't know. I've I've been tricked a lot by, you know, a lot of different fucking political regimes that we've had in this country. Good word. Yeah. Good use of the word. It's man. It's if you haven't, if you didn't come from some kind of uppity background, you didn't fucking, you're not in the field. (laughs) Uppity. (laughs) <laughs> so it's just, yeah it's hopefully hopefully we're wising up hopefully we're bit. growing it's a it's a bit altruistic but i have to have hope yeah yeah um so i with with that in mind with hope in mind we have a question from joe but before we get into the question, I, I just um, wanted to say, real quick, uh, you started teaching lessons for Guitar Center, right? Sean, for those of you don't, if you're if you're listening, you don't know Sean actually is a music teacher, and uh, he's been teaching thanks to COVID, you know, kind of remotely or or even in his home. He taught me how to play drums. Uh, I have been woefully inadequate in um, practicing lately because I've just gotten so busy with life. But that's an excuse, not a reason. But uh, how how was how what what how was it going, you know, doing music lessons in a actual, you know, place as opposed to just out of your home? Um, that's, that's a wonderful question. Fucking horrendous. Uh, wow. Really? So, yeah. So, uh, Unfortunately, the designs of most modern homes do not provide a layout that suits uh, a creator of my profession. 
So to make my home livable so that I can work from home is right. it, it is an insane process and, and an astronomical cost. Um, to be able to, to be able to oof, teach and work, like, I can't imagine being able to do it. Um, well, wait, I, are you permanently working, like doing lessons at Guitar Center or is it like so a... I have, I have a studio that I'm moving into and I'm working through that process of setting up a space that will be entirely run for me as a business. So that's... At Guitar Center? No, 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 no. At my, oh. I have a studio space. Guitar Center is uh, an overhead company that I have worked for before. I've worked at... Uh, Funky Monkey, Funky Monkey Music, and that later turned into Springfield, and and oh. and uh, I've worked for uh, a school of rock, and those are all overhead companies. So when you work out of there, you're hired into the company, and that's the kind of paycheck you get. You get like a stipend on top of an hourly rate, uh, and then you're you're paid for your time there at a Lower, I'll say lower than federal minimum wage, period. And then your stipends are, make up for that. So, and there are incentives to go to like open houses and you get paid for your time there uh, for the open house. You're, you can also be free to leave, of course, but it's all, um, it's all about who's willing to put in the most, most amount of time. And as a, when you have that ability to run it from a business yourself, you can operate at your own hours. So I can go and like, let's say instead of live lessons, I got questions and they were all about drums and I just compiled them into a list. I could go shoot out, you know, a batch of here's 50 videos, here's 50 videos, here's 50 videos answering these questions. But instead, I choose to be live with people. So, so there's a there's a process there that, like, working from teaching out of a home to teaching out of a, a building that's managed by somebody where half of your pay goes to upper management, and it goes towards building costs, and it goes towards they're doing the advertising, so you don't have to. Meanwhile, I'm also trying to do my own advertising and I'm trying to, to build my own business up. Like this is all stuff I'm juggling all at the same time. Understood. So it's, um, there's a lot of push and pull and I see now, I see now how hard it is to be uh, a, a business owner and an employee and a, and, the, and like all of the, the different roles that my parents played. Like my mom transitioned like into a, a sole business owner years ago when she started manufacturing quilts and, and turning her passion into a, a business. And it was like, I didn't understand what that kind of took, how, how you have to be always always being able to have access to your equipment to be able to run at any hour that you feel like you can start, you can keep creating. So it's uh -huh. like you, I don't get that out of the guitar center cause I can't work out of that building at all hours of the night. So that's why I have a space that I can run 24 hours out of. So there's some catch 22s to everything. Yeah, definitely. But it sounds like you are d definitely build, you know, working towards the right direction of, you know, trying to build something and hopefully not so much self-sustainable, but um, something you you can sustain and you know be 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 what you want it to be. I mean, so. it's you know, it's a it's a business. It's it's uh, it's a level of clientele. It is friends. It is 
It is. Um, first time connections. It is 10 year old relationships. It is just building that network and, and, and finding out what pieces of it fit in your personal life and what pieces don't fit in your personal life. And I, I, unfortunately, right. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've kept them separate for a long time. Like always separate identities, always, separate social media and I'm like I have to consolidate this shit because at the end of the day if I'm putting my professional moniker on it it should be my name like it right. should still be a representation of me because you know all in all the music that I play the stuff that I teach all the con concepts like my, my particular belief systems that I choose to reinforce the concepts it's all it's all it's all me it's all a culmination of all the stuff that i've ever learned and seen and heard and thought and heard other people's thoughts like it's all of that um so it's just funny i've been ruminating on like teaching out of guitar center and also trying to run a business out of a out of a studio and it's it's different marketing it's just different to totally it's, it's a different approach and it's i know eventually i'm gonna have to do the the venue calling and i'm not excited about going through those trials and tribulations but yeah you know, it you, is you, a, you know about it yeah you know I haven't had to call like booking agents and stuff like that. So that's a, a whole realm of people that I have not been told no by yet. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I haven't been yelled at yet by them. Yeah, so. I haven't been yelled at by them yet. I as I get older I get more I get more fucking sensitive about being yelled at. I just got yelled at the other day by another musician. It was fucking weird. It was a whole trippy incident. Yeah, been there, done that. Um, well, you know who else was yelling? A actually Vegas man. We're, we're you know, no. I'm I'm going to do hometown here. Oh a little no! Bit. What did Vegas, Vegas man do? <laughs> Vegas, forty-one year old Martin Klein. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, was that? Did we answer Joe's question? Mm. Thank you. No, Joe. I'm sorry. We we rolled right past the nope, question. No, we didn't. I wrote it down. I fucking saw it. Me. I never asked it. I never asked the question. I know, but you said Joe had a question, so I wrote down Joe as a yes. question. Sorry, I tried steamrolling <laughs> right past it. Thank you, Sean. So Joe asks, and <clears throat> it's a good thing we're drinking whiskey because this is good. we're going to get deep a little bit, or maybe not. If you had to write a book tomorrow, what would it be about? Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly well okay so i'll i'll start with i am writing a book but that mm -hmm. is that is a project that i'm okay with it being the long term it's going to be very it's going to be a it's it's a big fucking project yeah i don't think the question is you have to finish a book by tomorrow but what i'm saying is yeah. if you could write a if you had to write a book tomorrow what would it be like what do I want to, what message do I want to put out there that I would want to be heard that soon? Yeah, exactly. And the, the other thing is, then you, then you have to ask yourself the question, well, why haven't I? You know? And, and, oh, yeah. And so I, I saw that and I was like, ooh. I have no, I, I don't know. Would I, would I write a book about being a YouTuber? I don't think I, you know, I don't think I'm quite there at that status of, you know, here's why you should listen to me. Would it, would it be about being a, a dad? I mean, I, I think I'm doing a good job, but, you know, she's 14, you can tell. Um, so I think if anything, I, I would start writing, I would start writing an, an autobiography or my memoirs or something. You know, something I, I you write what you know, and I know my life. And that's that's really if I had if I had to write a book tomorrow, that's what I would do.
What's your? Can I ask what your book is about, or is that hush hush? Uh, it's about teaching. Hmm. It's about teaching, teaching in general, or it's going to be. It's going to be. Um, I'm going to try and make it 50 percent dry, consumable, factual data and information, and 50 percent human testimony and personal stories. And I'm just going to see what happens in the middle. Awesome. What are you going to call it? I don't know yet. I don't know, Josh. I don't know. I've been working on this for like five years. I don't know. (laughs) This started started out of a hatred for an old teacher. And it started with, it started with a letter to him and it is extensive. And it's it is still to this day the framework for this book, so it's going to be that. There's a lot to it, but it, I'm I'm really excited about being able to do it. But the, if I had to write a book tomorrow, shit. I have a working title for you. Okay. Flam Slam. No. <laughs> oh no! I can't do. I can't do it. I can't do the the autobiography Fi- no, no, no. thing. Flam Flam Slam colon finding your inner teacher. <laughs> God. Oh, probably a fucking cookbook. Hey, there you go. I would really be excited about having a, all the resources to put together a cookbook and try all of the things I've never been able to try. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be able to eat all of the things I've never been able to eat. I'd like to fucking take a food allergy test and figure out where I can push my body and where I can't. Like, I oh. I really want to go the fucking limit and try all of the things. Because I know there are people out there that are scared to try shit. And if my body can handle it, then it's just my fucking brain I have to get over. And that's no problem. I can get over my brain. I've been doing that my whole life. Huh. been living with this. That's probably why I'm going to die of a heart attack at 50. Chris Farley. <clears throat> you can't see this, listeners, but he's doing his best Chris Farley impression. Oh, man. Um, yeah, nice. but yeah, I would want to... I'd write a cookbook, and the cookbook would be a giant culmination of just everything I've ever had, everything I've ever tried. It would be every beer, any beer I could ever think of paired with any burger I would ever try or every banh mi sandwich and pair that to, I don't know what, uh, every kind of French fry or fried deep fried thing. Like, Fucking run the gambit, man. Go through my Rolodex. Use it. I am I am here for it, and I would want to cook it all. That's the thing. I mm. want to learn to cook it all. That sounds that sounds really exciting, and that sounds like a show that should be on, you know, like the Travel Channel or something like Anthony Bourdain And then I want to learn how to play every sport I've never been able to know how to play. Like, I'm shit at soccer, oh. and I don't know soccer fucking <laughs> positions at all, but I know something if I could play it or if I could do it. So that'd be right. fun. Pair them together, I could actually stay in shape well enough to eat all the fucking food, and then I could just live off of the Food Network, and I'd sell them my soul. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Go ahead, pay me money. I'll sell it. Right. I don't give a shit. I feel nothing. Whore. <laughs> I have no heart. Nice. I'll live uh, forever. You can just use me like a fucking battery. Plug it in. <laughs> Oh, well, Joe, I hope that answered your question. And if you have any questions you want to ask us, uh, go ahead and email two brains, one bottle at gmail.com. That's the number two brains, as in more than one, and the number one bottle, as in only one, at gmail.com. Uh, or, you know, hit us up on. I got links down in the description. Um, you know what time it is, Sean? It's time for weird news. It's time for weird news, weird news. There's weird news on the internet. And I found it. Yeah! Uh, I'm working on that. So, Vegas, as I said, 41-year-old Martin Klein was arrested after he ex- experienced shoplifting gone wrong. 
this guy, you're 41. You should, like, first of all, I wish you. Can I share a picture with you on this me this meeting? You see I don't here. know how. Uh, share screen. I'm gonna share my screen, and I'm gonna show you this guy. That his mugshot is <laughs> hilarious. Okay, let me know if you can see it. Hang on a second. This is riveting. I know, listeners, this is riveting. Are you ready? Man, this is terrible. Can you, Man, you can should you have sent it? this shit before we started the fucking show. What are you I doing? Didn't know I, could do that. I tried can, so can... fucking hard to be prepared. Holy shit. You see that face? That is Bobcat woo, Goldthwait. <laughs> woo, man! Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Hold on. I'm getting. I'm getting. Uh, let me grab my snifter of the cocktail of drugs that's in his system. I've <laughs> got. Uh, there's some mania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, some, some, some cocaine. Oh, yeah. A little bit of. Oh, meth. easily. I don't know. Hold on. His teeth are too good. Hold on. No cocaine. Yeah. And, Speed? uh, oh, a little bit of alcohol, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what is that? That's fun. What is that? That's medicinal. There's something, there's something in the background there. There's, um, oh, shit. Maybe, maybe a little fentanyl? Well, I don't know if he, I don't know if he can afford Maybe fentanyl. bath salts. That's where He's I went. He's shoplifting from a Walmart, remember? Bath salts. Yeah. All right. Jesus. So what did he do? So this, this genius... Stole. Let me let me stop sharing the screen for one second. There we go. Cause Zoom doesn't like to do that. All right, this genius stole a <laughs> stole a tube of cinnamon rolls by shoving them up his butt, and they exploded in his pants. <laughs> he. So he, the best part of how he got busted, okay? He and his his I'm gonna say partner. I mean his like friend who who's gonna help him rob. He and his partner entered the restroom, hung out for nearly 20 minutes before exiting, and a, an employee of the store had gone in and he was washing his hands, and he heard somebody in the stalls moaning. And um, yeah, that I I just. Wow. Oh my god. Just You realize the, Oh based in just in human anatomy, you could have a perforated yeah. colon from that. No, I, I I don't know if it's actually up his butt or just like, you know, in his, in between his cheeks or what. But the no, fact that he was No, buddy, they they get him yeah. up there. Yeah. Several cans. Several cans, Joshua. Several cans, it said. Ow! Wait, did it? Did it say silver? Ow! Ooh. Yeesh! Yeah. Several, um, both men had taken several cans of Pillsbury cinnamon rolls from the aisle and headed towards the bathroom. Both men. Several oh God. cans. So security approaches them, they right? They took. They shoved, bro. I'm telling you how this works, man. I have watched <laughs> Love Line for almost 30 years of my fucking life. I'm 31 years old. And I will tell you this, these dudes, they shove, shove stuff up their butts, and it breaks, oh and it breaks, and it goes through their colon, and it fucking creates bad stuff, and you could yeah, die. Yeah, I get it. Like, balloons of drugs and stuff. But, I, dude, I, I read the no, whole article. No, like, dough. Dough is really bad. It'll it'll clog your shit up. Oof. Yeah, it will. Oh, yeah, and, and if you, dude, if your intestines can't breathe, or can't get, yeah, bad things. Get, oh, I didn't expect it gets you worse. to go to death on me. Fuck. No, but but it gets it gets worse, dude. Okay, no. So hold on, I can't get my whiskey fast enough. Well, you're opening a different bottle. Yeah, you're making it dark. <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna go dark, so now I'm getting a different. No, bottle. no, 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 no. It's about it's, I've it's got about a different to get... bottle. I've got a fucking Glen Cairn for every bottle that's out here, my friend. Oh my god. Okay, you lush. So I I have a Glen Cairn for each bottle, but I only have two. So this is the Nico so... whiskey from the barrel, fifty one point four percent. Hmm. So what had happened was... This bottle that, that, design fucking is stupid, Josh. 
Yes, it is. What very, the fuck very is that? I'm pouring it's, out of a nipple. There's it, no neck on it. Oh. There's nothing. Sauce. Right. And well, it's let me, a twist let me, top. Oh. It's a seventy dollar twist top. Some of the cheapest, shittiest aluminum I've ever felt. This is sad, my friend. Look at this. Well, hopefully, hopefully, it's the money's in the the taste. This is going all the over this. This is going all over the table. I'm calling it now. May I recommend putting the Glen Karen on top of it, upside down, and then turning the whole thing over, and then do a, a twist move when you are done pouring. Yes, like that. Oh, I don't like this at all. Oh, this is how I break glass. Okay, and you're suggesting? Yeah, just gently turn the whole thing over. Oh, I don't have that much time, do I? There's no, no neck. It just comes. It bottle out. Well, then, in that case, put the rim right up against the uh, the grooves of the uh, the screw cap. There you go. We'll get you pouring like a big boy one of these days. Hey, nary a drop spilled, and that's a nice dark oh, color. Oh, many a drop spilled. Okay. This well, rug, let me, this rug's gonna smell like whiskey. Thanks, Josh. Let me, I'm gonna have to let clean me, that tonight. Appreciate that. Hey, vibe. you're welcome. The cat's gonna love it. So, <laughs> why don't you? Fuck. <laughs> my mom said, "Don't be a lesbian. I have to lick a bunch of carpet." <laughs> Fuck. So, I'm sorry, man. But but y y ah. I have decanters. You has decanters. But can I tell you why this is... I just want to finish the story. Guess what? Deal Chicken with me butt. now. Uh-huh. Yes. This is why I have a decanter. Yes. I bought good de This is a gift. That's thank, a beautiful thank you, decanter. Salvador. I thought you were going to say, thank you, Salvation Army. No, thank you, Salvador. <laughs> uh, and I bought it specifically for fucking stupid shaped bottles. And now I can put the bottle it came in on display. And I can set this out. Because it's also 51 fucking percent. And it can be decanted. So Ooh. this is a monumentous occasion. First time, Phil. Yay. All right. Now, can there I finish you know, the story? Something historic happened. Yes. Oh, no. It only took us a year in. Is that something. a purple glass? Is what? Is that glass purple on the decanter? No, no, it is not. That oh, is crystal. Uh, sorry, I had I had the window minimized so I could see the rest of my screen, and for some reason the lighting on the minimal window oh. made it look purple all around the edges. Anyway, so here's why the story got gets worse. I thought they got busted because the employee was in there, heard him moaning, and was like, "Oh, somebody should check on that guy." No, they got so okay. They got spotted by security as they do on the cameras, and they're like, "Okay, those guys took a bunch of stuff into the, the bathroom in there for twenty minutes." They come out, they approach them, and when they approach them, Michael Jones, a security guard at Walmart, said, "I grabbed Mister Klein, and that's when his friend squeezed KY jelly in my face." KY got all in my eyes and on the floor. I attempted to grab Mr. Klein, and that's when both of us fell. I fell on top of him, and that is when I heard a loud popping ah! noise. Mr. Klein screamed loudly, and then fluid started running from his backside. Oh, God. It, that's so much worse. Oh, wow. They're, only, they're being held on a $3,000 bond. Well, yeah, they did, like, seven bucks worth of damage. They broke, like, what, a couple cans worth of fucking Pillsbury he broke a lot. He broke a lot more than that. Oh, <laughs> he no. He broke his ass. No, no, but... he broke his ass. <laughs> but I'm saying of the store stuff, they only made oh, out with, like, God. like less than... I just... They made le they made out with less than oh. 3,000 bucks is what I'm saying. They're going to make <laughs> but, sure these guys never have another set oh. of their names. Oh, man. But, like, it, that's what I meant was, like, it got so much funnier and also so much... Just, oh, God. Um... The thing is, like, you saw his picture. He's on something for sure in that picture. How high are you that you're like, I'm going to eat ass cinnamon rolls? Mmm, ass rolls. That's what I want. Oh, my God. So, 
Somebody's got got chocolate on it now, baby. You can't touch those. You can't fucking eat them. You can't put them in your mouth. You can't do that. I I know there's a big old generational gap between me and the youngins that like to do the booty (laughs) eating. And it ain't me, man. It ain't me. It ain't my thing. Oh, I ain't dip to I mean, it. I, I ain't gonna I, try it. I don't want to try it. Don't need to try it. You can go ahead and fuck off right now if you God. do try it. But Jesus I thought butt chugging was weird. Man, no, man. I, that's a yeah. that's a hell no for me. That is an out only. No, yeah, thank that's, you. That's a you know big what? Old and you know what? If you like it going in there, congratulations to you. That is wonderful. I am so fucking happy that you get to enjoy that. That is fantastic for you. Oh. I'm not there. So, so moving on to another weird news story, not about the butt, but about other things. Uh, a California man was arrested because he had 52 lizards and snakes hidden in his clothing. And I'm just like, Ugh, the creepy crawlies, you know? Uh, so, obviously, he was smuggling. Um... 30 years old, you, sh- you should know better. But, uh, oh god, 43 horned lizards and 9 snakes. From, oh, he was at the San Ysidro border. So he got busted by customs. Ooh, you, my friend, are doing some time, I think. Yeah. Um, wow, just... Agents found 52 live reptiles tied up in small bags... Which were concealed in the man's jacket, pants, pockets, and groin area, the statement said. I want to think he put the snakes in the groin. <laughs> Smugglers, this is a quote from Sydney, Sydney Ackie, uh, Customs and Border Protective Director of Fields Operations in San Diego. He says, Smugglers will try every possible way to try and get their product, or in this case, live reptiles across the border. In this occasion, the smuggler attempted to deceive CBP officers in order to bring these animals into the U.S. without taking care for the health and safety of the animals. The man, 30-year-old U.S. citizen, was arrested. Yeah. Well, um, good. He should have been arrested. He should have. It doesn't say how long he was going to get or whatever. But yeah, no, um, it's definitely not... Uh, the problem is that the exotic market, there are people willing to pay for this. But I was just like, how? I thought he was doing, I, I didn't realize it was a, a going a, literally across the, you know, the border in San Ysidro. I, I thought it was just, he was stealing them from, I don't know where, a store or whatever. But man, that, wow. See, a lot of times, Sean, when I, I get this stuff, I purposely don't read a whole bunch of it because I want to be, I want to react just like you are. I like to get the blind react as much as possible. Um, that being said, our last weird news for this podcast. I'm sorry for ruining your weird news segment. You didn't weird. No, no. Th- there, there was, there was. <laughs> I feel it, like I it, ruined it, your weird news segment. Hmm. Not at all. No. I feel the like I ruined roll. it, and I'm sorry. No, the. the I feel like I ruined rolls, a lot so. of things this week, and I'm sorry. Oh, buddy. No. You'll do better. I'm good. I never Don't worry. Not sorry for anything. Yeah, right. You know who should be sorry? Our... What? Bit much on the the sherry, or or was that a happy noise? What? You made a... Are you okay? Do you need a a cigarette? you need some time out? Yeah. You two need to be alone? What? At first inhale was the most fruit cakey of the fruit cakest <laughs> noses I've ever had in my life. But it was just it wasn't a fruit cake, it was all of the ingredients fresh as could be in containers on a on a table. And you just went, you. funneled it into your nose and went... Like like when you watch a cooking show and they have everything pre-measured out in those little plastic containers and, and you just went down and smelled them all. Nice. And this is what? Nika? Japanese blend? This is a Nika uh, from the barrel. 
Feel like I, I feel like I did a review of Nika. Let me check here, on Room Six, uh, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, I, Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey is what I did. You had the Nika I Coffee, did. so I saw yeah, that, the Nika Coffee Grain, and I was like, I kind of want that because I've heard so many good things. And then I saw right. this, and I haven't heard a fucking thing about it, so I wanted right. to try it. So the Nika Coffee Grain was. It was okay. It, it it was literally when I say Jap that it was like here Japan's gonna take a little bit of everything all of the time. It, it was I, I got like everything, and unfortunately, I think I got it served in a either a plastic glass or like a the wrong kind of glass, and I couldn't pick up much on the nose. But if I remember right, but I was at a dive bar. Literally, it was the dive bar. So no, no, it was a sand dollar lounge. That's what it was. Do you mind if I tell us the last uh, weird news story for this? Go for it. So, sir. We're going to Florida. <laughs> Good old Florida. Florida man. I'm going to have to like write a, a jingle for this. Florida man. Florida man. Being as weird as you possibly can. Uh, so you you may have heard about this little thing about the Capitol riot. You know, that, that bit of treason. Yes. Yes. So apparently a restaurant. Sorry. Friends of... Literally, the guy carrying the lectern, Adam Johnson, friends of his were going to... He, he, he knew he was going away to serve some time for it, okay? And his friends were like, we're going to throw you a going away party, buddy, at, at a, a restaurant in uh, Brandonton, Florida called Caddy's, as in Golf Caddy. Yep. On, on April 1st, April Fool's Day. <laughs> well... What happened was that his uh, prison party got canceled um, because. Oh my god! You hate to see he, it. Just, no, you, no, you no, know, no, like, no, no. Why do they got to pick on the nice ones? No, it, it get there's reasons. You know, restaurants gonna be like, oh, sure, you want to host have a party? Sure, here's you know, okay, we'll take your money. But but there was a Facebook event about it, and this motherfucker. He he encouraged he jokingly encouraged attendees to bring quote shivs files and phone cards to help send him off. <laughs> so needless to say, it got deleted eventually by Facebook. I think it was Facebook. Uh, yeah, and uh, the restaurant was like, mm, pass, hard pass, buddy. Uh, oh yeah, never mind. They were just going to do it. They didn't tell caddies that. Oh, by the way, we're bringing a party. They were just going to show up. So um, that's funny, and yet not 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 funny. Um, dumbass gets to go seventy five days in prison, followed by a year of supervised release, and uh, he's already, this already happened apparently. Yeah, in February. Oh no, no 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 no. This is what? Okay, yeah, this already happened. So he's already out. He completed. He has to complete two hundred hours of community service and pay five grand. For his part in the insurrection. So there you go. Uh, I just wanted to f finish on a slightly less dark, <laughs> dark cinnamon chocolate <laughs> note. No, but, that was yeah. the um, that was the Whistler with the dark chocolate note. That was the second nice. tasting through it. Well, I'm all done with my Kilbrin Irish blended, and I'm definitely getting a big bottle of that because that is. That is a lovely Tuesday night whiskey all night long, or all week long. Nummy num num. And um, we are almost out of time, sir. Do you have anything to say to our lovely listeners before we skedaddle? Get the Nika coffee whiskey from the barrel. That, that's the. That that's not Oloroso, right? No. Um, the finished barrels. Bourbon barrels, sherry butts, refill hogsheads, and more. Huh. It's It almost sounds like they're making stew. Over 100 different constituent whiskeys are listed. Wow. Well, mine was delicious. I'm glad yours was delicious. It is. Yours. It is wonderful. Um, 
I'm looking through the the notes on on it from the website and what I agree and disagree with. And right. what I'll say I agree with is the mouth feels incredibly soft. It is it is like the thinnest buttercream frosting that is still thick enough to be a frosting, but it's really more of an icing, but we're going to call it a frosting. Right. It's it's that is a hundred percent there with butterscotch syrup, orange peel, stone fruits. There's a, there's a really nice espresso background to it, but it's not coffee. It's not as earthy as coffee. It's sweeter. It's milkier. It's it's more diluted. Interesting. So they're still keeping coffee in there, like the coffee grain whiskey, but not. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. That's the Nika. We're talking. The um no, this is the Nika that we're that we're drinking. Oh, now. this is the Nika. Okay. Chocolate note that I noticed before was in the Whistler. Ah, okay. Yeah, so this it says allspice and clove, which I don't get at all, and I'm very sensitive to those. It also says chili. I don't get any chili from that. Hmm. Um, Maybe it needs to air more. But it or, is such or... a it is such a nice fresh. I put it. It's all of the, the brightness from fresh fruit and all of the sugar from icings and desserts. Nice. It's it's but none of the harshness, like it's too sugary. Right. And none of the underripe, super tangy sweetness that'll get your jaw soured. So balanced like somebody knew what they were doing and was paying attention. Oh man, it's fucking wonderful. This is great. Yeah. Right on. The bottle sucks. The yeah. bottle's shit. Like that is it's just one of the worst that I've ever seen. However, the, I'm glad that it's overproof because that's going right in a fucking decanter. And maybe they knew that, and that's why they didn't invest anything into the goddamn aluminum top. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's like almost no neck on that thing. You might it's like a, a medicine bottle or something. Yeah. Oh oh it's the same shape as a hydrogen peroxide bottle. Yank there, there it is. Yes. Yeah, that's I it was what familiar. I want my fucking whiskey to remind me of. Hydrogen peroxide. Well, I mean... <laughs> Alright. So, well, with that. Anything else for the listeners? Um, ah. Go listen to new music. Go listen hey, there you to, go. Go spend your time listening to new music and go read pages of a new book you haven't read. New. And if, not a if fucking you want to favorite, know... not a comfort food yeah. read. Something new, something challenging... For you, something that you wouldn't normally read. Nice. Well, I'm going to do a shameless plug and say if you want to hear my views of new music, new original music, check out my YouTube channel, Room 6. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in all one word, Room 6 LV. That's Room, the number 6 LV. LV is for Las Vegas. Uh, other than that, this thanks drop, for listening. Sorry, this what? drops April? This episode, yes, will be April. Next episode drops May. Yes. That is how time works. Cheers to future us. My brother will officially be married by our next episode. Nice. So well then. Let us clink. Let us clink. Three, two, one. Ooh, Ooh that was a note. <laughs> yeah, it was one note. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Oh, Jake! <laughs> All right, congratulations! I'm so Congrats, proud Jake. of you. Uh, this is this is past Sean. So, ooh, <laughs> I can only tell you things that have already happened. Yeah, I, I can't predict I, the future, but if I could, I would say that it was a bitch and fucking ceremony. Everybody had a good time, and you said yes. So that was the more thing importantly you to do. The other fun. person said yes too. Oh, she's going to say yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, she's cool. Say yes. Nice. All right. Well, with that, thank you for listening to Two Brains, One Bottle. Thank you for being a patron. And if you're not a patron already, please consider doing so. Go to patreon.com forward slash room six. Uh, other than that, remember to be amazing. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time here on Two Brains, One Bottle and room six. And you know what's coming. ba da ba ba da bum Wow. Oh, we were real. Sounded like five claps.